Alright, so what is up guys? It is the CLC, back with another video, and today we are doing another review. So today we have the Once Upon a Brick storybook. It doesn't really have a name. Uh, it is set 21315, and it is equipped with 859 pieces. I don't know why I said equipped, but it sounded cool. Anyways, um, just move this over there for the, the set. And, um... This is a really great set as a play set or a display piece. It has many play features. The main one being obviously that it folds up and down. I guess that is the only one. But I mean, it is definitely one of my top five favorite sets of all time. And I do have quite a, ooh, have quite a bit of sets. So I'm not just going to sit here and talk a little dive into the nitty gritty stuff. But first, uh, we should get the minifigs out of the way and cover those guys. Okay, so I should first explain a little bit about this uh, book, I guess. So it sort of comes with scenes, and you can switch the scenes out depending on what you like. This uh, set comes with a default of two, I guess, scene scenes, <laughs> stories, I guess. And the two stories are Little Red Riding Hood and Jack and the Beanstalk. And so if you haven't guessed already, the first minifigure that we have is from the Jack and the Beanstalk story. And this is my least favorite within the storytelling aspect. But the Jack and the Beanstalk build is brilliant and the most amazing thing ever. I just, it blows my mind. And uh, this is courtesy to the designers who are named Grant and Jason. They don't give the last names, but I do know for a fact Jason is from JK Brickworks. So if you are looking for very complicated and amazing technic builds that do insane stuff, look him up on YouTube. He is one of the most brilliant Lego minds out here, out in the field. So anyways, on to the minifigure. So Jack has a nice medium nougat hair. Jack, sorry, my bad. This is the giant from Jack and the Beanstalk. This is Jack. And so everything's on like uh, this guy kind of scale. So like the windmill is really small. And so it looks like the giant is giant. And not really much, not doing all the legs. Um, there is no arm printing. Which is kind of disappointing because like he doesn't look like he's wearing a tank top that's mostly the one nitpick I have on, on him he also does have some back printing which has some neat details with uh, some heads that he has claimed but that is mostly it for Jack or for the giant now, Jack is basically just a... So, yeah, Jack is one of the most detailed small figure... Or, min, what are they? Micro figures that I've ever seen. He's got some clothing printing. It looks like he has dual molded legs. Obviously not. But they made that inclusion, which I really uh, like. Not really much else. Sadly, there is no printing on the back. It is just blue. But, overall... I am looking to putting this guy in my micro fig collection. Alright, so next up is the oldest character from the Red Riding Hood story. She has a nice gray bun with a pink sort of nightgown. Not dual molded legs. And I don't think any characters have dual molded legs. None of them do. But uh, she really captures the look of the grandma. And as you can see in the next minifigure, so this grandma just has a very simple design. Not much on the back, what you would expect, but I do like this hair piece. I think, ooh. I think the hair piece could be really useful, but that's mostly it. The pink legs also are kind of unique. Next up, we have the wolf. And I'm pretty sure this headpiece is exclusive because of that glasses printing. It's not too useful in a city or something, but it is exclusive 
and just an overall neat design. This is the exact blouse that Grandma was wearing just with a bunch of rips in it, which I enjoy that so much. Little details like that go so far. With the back, all you have is her, is his, her, his, ma the mane of the wolf. No tearing on the back, which I see because printing on the bag of legs is hard. But just some uh, tears in the torso part. And they even included some, I guess, stitching issues right here in the back of the blouse where the mane is covering which is just a really nice detail that they added. Next up we have the main character of the story, Red Riding Hood. This is the character that is the most interesting out of all of the minifigs that come in this set. You have this nice, you have this nice hair hat combo that she has with the hood. There is no bottom but that is what the cape makes up for. Nice red cape. Not too common, but very useful. She has a basket, common yellow. We'll just move that out of the way. And one of the most interesting pieces is the her skirt, which honestly, that is a super useful minifigure design. Skirts are useful in general, because they, they just came out with them like a couple years ago. The hard skirts, and I really like them. Not much printing on the torso as you saw on the front, just like a little bow and everything. But if it came with an extra skirt, I would be so glad. Because it's just amazing for girl minifigures to have detail like that. Especially with all the detailing that's on this skirt. Legs, not really anything. Literally just brown, short mid-legs. Not mid-legs, short legs I think is what they're called. But yeah, just, just brown. So first of all, without putting anything in, you do have these sort of structures, grass rock structures, that you can easily take out and put in your own version of, which I like. But for these two main stories, these stay in, so I like to keep them in as well. The next part we have is these two little prop areas that you can put figures in. So the first one is pretty simple. It is just a six by eight tan plate with a few bricks making up a bed, which I like quite a bit because it is very easy to put a figure such as grandma or the wolf in there. The second one and the last one is also for the Red Riding Hood story. It is another just six by eight plate with a little uh, tea or a coffee table. And I think that's nice. So these go, nope, the bed's on that side. So this just goes, I'm pretty sure it's like this. So that one goes there and then this one goes here, okay. Next, we have the main build, which is the house. Here, let's get a closer look, shall we? Okay, so here is kind of what the house looks like from a top-down point of view. And it, and it just, from a top-down sort of view, and it just folds up real nice. I didn't do it right. The coffee table goes on the other side. And again, it just folds up quite nicely. Now we'll move on to the Jack in the Bean stock. Before we move on to the Jack in the Bean stock one, um, I'm just going to show you guys how quick it is to switch these two stories out. So I'm gonna put a timer on screen now. And it will be in fast motion just because you don't have to sit through me just changing it out. But it is quick. Ready, set, go. Okay, so it's kind of hard to get the bean stuck in frame, but I think that should have been around 10 seconds. So yeah, super simple, super easy. 
And now we move on to the review of these two separate pieces. And I'm going to do them in a little bit of a closer form like we did the house. Just to make it a little bit easier for me and you guys to see.